take some you know, chill out for a little bit, man. It's like a little refresher course for you, man. Sure. You know you can't get enough of this, man. You already know, they're not going to do it with you. <laughs> All right, brothers. Yeah, so so this is the first class of the, of the Father Within class, man. Everything that we're going to be talking about is establishing a strong, positive relationship with your children so we can have the influence that we desire. That's the main thing that we want with our children, right, is influence. Because if we ain't got the influence, who will have the influence? Huh? Who do you think I have the influence? The school. <laughs> And, right, and who was friends, society, right? right? Society will have the influences, businesses will have the influences, and what is business's main objective? Get customers. To make a profit, right? Yeah. It's not to help somebody be the best them. So then the business will tell our children, man, if you buy this, you will see life in a whole different way, right? That's what businesses will do. So the business's main objective is to get people to buy. They're not trying to make sure that they develop into these individuals that are successful and living life on a whole nother level, right? And they can look at life and be like, man, you know what? I'm enjoying my life, man, right now. Oh, yeah, you're just a time, brother. We just, we just get started. We just get started. We just, get started. We just it's go time, man. It's go time. It's go, it's go time. Right. So, yeah, so then that's the main thing is just making sure that our children grow up to become adults. And they say, man, you know what? I got the right mind to go at life with because my father gave me the tools that I needed to be able to function at a high level. That's what it's all about, brothers. And for us to be able to give our children those tools that they need to be able to function at a high level, we're going to have to have a positive, strong relationship with them, right? So then that means that when we are in their presence, they will trust our information because they trust us, right? They will think positively about our information because they think positively about us. When you look at a negative relationship, what does that look like? That's a relationship with barriers. That means it's difficult to be able to transfer information. What does a negative relationship look like, fellas? It's a relationship that when you're in somebody's presence, you like, man, dang, man, I don't even like you, man, for real. And before they even say anything, you are already at the opposite end of the spectrum before they even get anything out of their mouths because you got a negative feeling about that individual. Maybe it's the way that they talk to you. Maybe it's the way that, you know, they let their word fall through the cracks or whatever, but it's something that they had done to get you to feel in a way that is negative. Negative and you don't really vibe with them like that. Can, uh, do do y'all know what that feel like? Our children can end up in a negative relationship with us because we're not intentional and deliberate about what we are doing when we are interacting with them. So then that's why it is so important for us to be intentional about what we are doing. With my children, I got three children. And then my 14-year-old, my 7-year-old, that's where I'm at. I got a 25-year-old. He's doing his thing now. But, but my two other children right now, I'm talking about I'm intentional about what I'm doing when I'm interacting with them. So I'm not just winging it. I'm like, man, okay, I'm doing this because I'm expecting this result, right? I'm doing that because I'm expecting this result. So I'm operating in this relationship with my mind. You know, so then, and that's what's so important. So now the results that I get is beautiful results. I just seen my daughter just come off the bus today, and she like this is she comes, she like, hey, daddy, you know, seven years old, straight off the bus. You know, I get her off the bus every day. I put her on the bus, you know, every day. You know, so she's running to me, and she's like, and every day, every every time she comes with a picture. And that means she's in school doing what? Drawing pictures and then saying, Daddy, you know, super dad, you know. In her mind, man, I'm super dad, right? I didn't establish that in her mind, that I'm super dad. So if I've established that I'm super dad in her mind, is she going to be influenced by my information that I have? More, more than likely, right? My son... Same thing. You'll see my son, man, this brother, the 14-year-old, man, he's put together pretty good, man. He's, he's, a, he's in the ninth grade, about to go to the 10th grade, but he'd be working out in his mind. And I just, look at, I just look at him and I say, man, this brother got a mind on him, man. 
You know, he's squatting 265 pounds, man, in the bucket, man. You know, he's benching 180. I'm like, man, this brother going to be hard to bring down, man. He's going to be hard to bring down, man, as a running back. I'm just saying, though, man. But he's in the gym. He go to Crunch Fitness right along with me. But he just be pushing it, you know. And I know, I'm like, man, this brother got a mind. And, and if we just continue to build on that, how can he not be successful? So that's what I hang my hat on with my children is that it's not about what we put in our children's hands. It's what we put in their heads. Because if we put the right thing in their heads, they will always be able to keep something in their hands. So I'm intentional about putting the right thing in their heads. And the only way that you will have the opportunity to put the things in their heads and, 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 and see it stick is if you establish that relationship with them that is strong. But if you have a weak relationship, when you attempt to put the things in their heads, they will reject it and it will not take root. Why? Because they think negatively about you. So everything that we will be talking about in this program is how to establish that strong, positive relationship with our children. That is key. That's everything, right? And the way we're going to get that done is by being intentional, right? So then the first, the, 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 the first place that we're going to start at in establishing a strong, positive relationship with our children is where? Understanding what type of father that we are going to deliver to our children, right? What type of father are we giving them? We don't want to give them any old father because if we give them any old father, then they can become any old adult, right? The relationship is going to be any old way. We want the relationship to be strong. We want our children to be successful. So for that to happen, we got to make sure that we understand what type of father that we are giving them, right? That's where it starts at. And this is how you start to strengthen that relationship off the bat because now your children will understand that you are not careless when you are interacting with them, but you are focused. You are intentional and deliberate about what you are doing when you are interacting with your children. And they will get that feel because now they will be able to say, man, my dad is like way handling me with care. You can tell when you're being handled with care and when you're being handled recklessly, right? <laughs> And if you are being handled recklessly, you can feel a certain type of way, right? You can become kind of salty. Man, you're just handling me all any old kind of way. I feel a certain type of way, you know? Like, I know I'm a child, but I'm still salty because I, I should be handled with care. Our relationship should be handled with care. So then that's why we want to make sure that we are intentional about what type of father that we are giving to our children. And the first place that we want to start at with understanding what type of father that we are going to give to our children is saying, man, how do we come to that conclusion? The first thing that we want to do is we want to reflect. Where do we reflect to? Absolutely. So the best place to start is with ourselves. So now when we start with ourselves, we want to go back into our past and think about those positive interactions that we had with our parents when we were children that produced the positive feelings inside of us. Because once we find those positive interactions that produce the positive feelings, what we will then do is just duplicate those positive interactions with our children. And this is the first building block on understanding what type of father that we are going to deliver to our children. So when I'm talking about the positive interaction, I'm talking about whatever it was. Whatever it was back when you were a child that produced the positive feelings when your parents were interacting with you. It could have been anything. Anything small, big, whatever. But, but we want to make sure that we identify what that positive interaction was. So for instance, my father, what he used to do, he used to make himself accessible to me and my friends, right? I grew up in a, in a single parent household. My mom, she got caught up back in the 80s, but now she done recovered and now she's really strong in, 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 in her grandchildren's lives and things like that. She, she, she's in my life, so it's a beautiful thing. But my father, he raised me and my, me and my brother, right? But one thing that he used to do is he used to make himself accessible to me and my, to me and my friends. That means that when we was outside playing football, you know, in the, in the, in the backyard, he would come outside and say he was an all-time quarterback, right? Now, I loved when he played the all-time quarterback because I would go deep. 
You know, I would go deep and he would always fit it into me. I could be quadruple coverage and he would still pass it to me. It's like he didn't see nobody else. I used to love that, right? I used to be like, hey, there we go. And I would squeeze the ball, take it into the touchdown, like, yeah. My friends was like, man, damn, man, it's like we don't never get the ball, Los. And I'm like, man, I know, man, but at least he's out here. You might have an opportunity, but they like, we ain't gonna never have no opportunity, man. And he's throwing it to you every time, man. It's like, man, I, we, I, you was, you, five people was on you the last time, man, and he still threw it into you, right? But, but, but after the game, the way that my friends talked about my father, it, it produced that positive feeling inside of me because my friends was like, man, hey, man, I'm just glad your dad out here, man, because my friends didn't have no dads, you know, in their lives, and they was and they was really man high on him out there playing with us, you know, just just having the possibility that they was going that he was going to throw it to him was good enough for them, you know, just the possibility. So when they used to talk about my father in that way. It, 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 it had me feeling like, man, you know what, that's my pops, man, you know, I got the connection, man, you know, that's him, he's on my side, you know, it made me feel good on the inside, positive feeling. You fast forward to me being a father now, I automatically implement that into my parenting. I make myself accessible to my children and their friends. So when my daughter, we on the playground, and she comes up to me and she says, Dad, man, guess what? Man, can you go ahead and be the lava monster? And I'll be like, man, what you talking about? It's hot in a mug right outside. Man, I want you to be the lava monster. And I've not been working all day, right? And, and, and her friends is all right there, too. Is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? I say, what is the lava monster, daughter? And she says, the lava monster chases us around. And then once once the lava monster catches us, he, 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 he burns us alive and whatever. But you got to catch us. And I say, man, dang, okay. So I'm the lava monster. I got to chase y'all around the playground. And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, all right. And then I just transformed. Ugh, lava monster. Ah, And I'm chasing these kids on the playground, hot than a mug in the summertime, sweating bullets, man. I'm all on the monkey bars like this, like jumping on the monkey bars. I'm jumping on the swing, swing set like that. I'm just all over the playground. I'm mashing around the playground, catching up to them, throwing them up like, ah, my lava monster done got you. Ah, right. And they just laughing like a mug, man. And the other parents is, is on the playground. They looking and saying, man, dang, this brother is, is high energy, you know. <laughs> but like, we ain't doing that, you know. And I, but, but, but in my mind, you know what's dominating my behavior is, 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 is what I know, you know. Because I said that, man, my father made himself accessible to me and my friends. This is my opportunity to duplicate that with my daughter. And, 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 and make myself accessible to her and her friends, right? I already know what? That it produced a positive feeling inside of me when I was a kid. So now what I want to do is make sure that my children feel that same positive feeling that I felt when I was a child. And that's the first step to establishing a strong, positive relationship. Just giving your children what you already know to be right. That's it. And it can be anything. It can be, man, I, 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 I remember my father, we, we used to go, we used to, okay. About 7, about 7.30. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I'll pull back up. Okay, okay. If, I, I, I remember we used, to, we used to go to the store like late night when we used to do the laundry, we would go to the store because we used to walk to the store. After we would drop off the laundry, we would walk to the store and we would get some chips, some dip, and, and, and a snack, and then we would go back to the house and watch Benny Hill in this sports center, right? That's what we was watching at night, right? And that stuff used to be good for me just to be able to eat those snacks. So now with my children, I make sure that we have that snacks. My, me and my daughter, we eat grapes. So then that's what she know me for, grapes. Every single, I got my daughter week on, week off. Right, so I alternate with her mom week on, week off. With my son, I got him five days of the week, and he go to his mom on the weekends. Right, so but with my daughter, we do the we do the grapes. So we do the grapes every single night, and she knows that when it's my week on, guess what? It's going to be the grapes, and I'm just doubling down 
on when I used to have the snacks with my father at nighttime and how I used to feel good, you know. So I'm just doing the same thing with my with my children. The same thing that was done to me that was positive, I'm doing it with my children. You see what I'm saying? So it's just about really, man, thinking about that. And that's and, and, and that's what we want to do, brothers, until and, and by the next time we meet, that's what I, I challenge y'all to do is write that stuff down. Like write down all of the positive interactions that you had with your parents. I don't care if it's one. I don't care if it's two. I don't. If it's a hundred, write them all down because what this does, it puts it in the front of the mind. If if if, 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 if we don't write it down and if we don't focus on doing it, it's going to be difficult to really deliver it. You'll do it sporadically, right here and there, you know, but you won't do it as often as as it, as it needs to be done when you are thinking about it. Does that make sense? So then that means write down that list. I don't care what it was. You can say, man, you know what? I remember when I would just get out of school and, and then my, 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 my mom or my dad, whoever your caregiver was, man, they just, man, stopped at McDonald's, man, out the blue. And I used to feel good about them stopping at McDonald's, right? You know, those type of things, because guess what you're going to do? I'm telling you what you're going to do, right? You're going to just stop at a McDonald's or whatever out the blue, right? You're going to do the same exact thing that was done for you that produced the positive feeling. You can say, man, you know what? When I used to talk to my to, to my people or my, or my loved one or when I used to talk to my mom, dad, caregiver, when I used to talk to them, they was paying attention to what I said, and, and they made me think that they they really was hearing me. You know what I'm saying? And then guess what you're going to do? You're going to do the same exact thing with your children, but you want to write that down so you can start to set your so 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 you can start to set the stage on the father that you're going to deliver to your children. Make sense? Everything that I do with my parenting brothers is based on that. I'll be literally man doing the things that I know already work, but I do I, I do it at a high level because I condition my mind. So that's why I always challenge people, write it down, read over it, talk about it, right? Write it down, read over it, talk about it. Repetition is the mother of learning, brothers. So now you'll be like, man, hey, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it consistently, right? Because you, it's, it's in the front of your, it's in the front of your mind. So when you think about the positive and you duplicate the positive, what's next? What you think the next building block is to determining this father you're going to deliver to your children? If we're going to duplicate the positive, what do you think the next thing that we want to do? What's the opposite? What's the opposite of the positive? The negative. So this is where it gets... <laughs> It gets tricky, brothers, and this is what this is what weakens so many relationships. Is because people don't identify and resist the negative. When you do not identify and resist the negative, the negative will show up unconsciously. Say how so? People are be saying, "Man, you know what? I didn't like the way that I felt when I was being screamed at by my parents when I did something wrong." And then when their children do something wrong, now that they are a parent, they're screaming in the same exact way that they were screamed at, even though they know that they didn't like it when they were children. But they are moving unconsciously, and that's why they are giving their children that same negative that they had when they was children because they're not thinking about it. If they were to think about about it, they would say, I'm not going to give my children the same poison that I was given when I was a child, because I know if I do, it would sicken them just like it sickened me. It will weaken the relationship with them like it weakened the relationship with me. People will say, man, you know what? Man, my father or my mother or whoever used to tell me that they were coming through or they would give me their word and I would see their word fall through the cracks and it produced a negative feeling on the inside of me. But now that they are parents because they're not intentionally and deliberate, they're not intentional and deliberate about what they are doing, they giving their children the same exact thing unconsciously. So then that means that they'll go ahead and give their word and just like they was just like the word was given to them when they was a child. And they will say, man, dang, man, I can't even believe it. I'm doing the same thing that was done to me. How do you think that that happens? 
How do you think if we give our children a father that we don't want them to have because we're not thinking about it? So then that means when I was 19 years old and my son was three months old and I was in Marion Correctional Institution about to serve a 10-year prison sentence, I said, man, dang, what the heck, man? This is not my idea of the father that I wanted to give to my son. I was going to give my son a next-level father. I loved, I was proud to be a dad. When my son was born, I was like, yes, that's my son. Carlos, his, his name is going to be Carlos Christian. Yeah, no doubt. Same name. I was proud to be a father. But because I wasn't focused on what type of father that I wanted to deliver to my son, I gave my son a father that I did not want him to have because he got a father that was away in prison for 10 years. He wasn't able to access me like I wanted him to. But that's why I got to say, man, we got to look at the father that we are giving to our children so we can give them the father that we want them to have. Now, he got a father, man, that was away for 10 years. That was never my idea. But the way that it happened is because I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't understanding what this great responsibility entailed. And because I didn't think about it, I couldn't go at it with the mind that is necessary for us to be effective. And that's how you end up in situations that you don't want to be. That's how you become a father that you really don't want to be. Right now, I'm a father that I really want to be, that I desire to be. But I'm thinking about it with my mind. When I didn't think about it with my mind, I ended up at my bed area like, man, what the heck am I on? This is crazy. And I see people playing and kicking it and giggling. And I'm like, it ain't nothing funny. When I was watching my son just wave off with a visit and the, and the crash gates are closed, click, you know, and he just kept on waving. I was like, man, this ain't funny. You know, this is not the father that I, that I wanted to be. But, it's, but, but, but who can give our children a father that we want them to have? Us. But we got to use our minds to get it done. So if I would have been thinking about identifying the negative, guess what? I would have said, hold up. Man, I didn't like it when my mom wasn't accessible to me when I was a child. So then that means I'm not about to be in the street selling dope. I'm not about to be moving in that type of way, right? I would have made decisions contradictory to the things that I was doing if I would have been thinking about the type of father that I wanted to give to my child because all of the stuff that I was doing would have, would have compromised me being that father. So it's no way that I could have been in the streets doing what I did. It's no way that I could have been running around with guns doing what I did. It's no way that I could have been doing those things if I would have thought about the type of father that I wanted to give to my children because that the, because the way that I was moving, it compromised me being that type of father that ultimately that I wanted to be. But because I didn't think about the type of father that I wanted to be, my son got any old father. Identify the negative and then resist it. So then that means now with my, with my children, I make sure that when I give my word, I mean what I say and I say what I mean. That means I won't say yes. If it ain't a for sure yes, I don't say yes. Because I don't want my children for, for I don't want my word to come back to my children void. Like I want my word to be solid. So then that make that means I make sure of it. So then that's when, when they say, man, hey, can you get the headphones from the principal? I made sure I get that done. Right, It's on my mind. I'm not going to forget. I'm going to operate at a high level because I understand I don't want my word to come back void. I'm, I'm true to my word because I understand how it feels when your word, when somebody gives you their word and that stuff comes back void. When they say they're going to do and then they don't. When they say they don't come to class and then they don't. Right? I understand how that stuff feels so I make sure that my children don't feel that feeling. Consciously identify the negative and resist it. 
So that means when they trying to press me and say, come on, say yes, dad, say yes, dad. I got to make sure that everything checks out to make sure that I can do it. You ain't going to rush me into a yes. My daughter is good for that. She's seven years old and she tries to rush me into yeses. You can't rush me into a yes, daughter. I need to think about it. I got to make sure everything checks out because I know that when I say yes, it's got to come back yes. It can't be yes and then my mood changes and then it turns into a no. That means that it's a yes. My mood changes. It's a yes. It doesn't matter. Yes is yes. My no is is no, and I got to make sure that I live by that. So when she tries to rush me, just say yes, dad. Or if she tries to get me to say yes while I'm on the phone, because she's trying to go ahead and sneak it in just to get me to say yes while I'm distracted. I know what she's on. You ain't going to get me to say yes while you think I'm distracted. I'm still on it. No, wait until I get on off the phone, and then I'll answer you. Just say yes, dad. Now she's into the, into the place where, yes or no? She tells me, yes or no? <laughs> Just yes or no, Dad. <laughs> she doesn't even want to hear it. I'm going to think about it. Just yes or no, Dad. <laughs> but she understands that, man, I'm, I'm going to follow through. You know, I'm going to follow through. I want my children to see me as an individual that follow through because I've seen, I seen how it felt when they ain't follow through, when people ain't follow through. I, so I'm intentional. I'm intentional about what I'm doing. I'm intentional about what I'm doing. So now after we understand about building on the positive, identifying and resisting the negative, again, with that negative, we want to write that down, brothers. We want to write it down. And some people will say, man, you know what, man, that stuff was painful, you know? And it's like peeling back stabs, man. That stuff, some stuff I went through with my parents, right? Brothers, this is why it's go time. Right? That's why it's go time. You want to peel that back so you can make sure that you feel that again so you can make sure that your children will never feel it. But if you don't peel it back and look at it, brothers, it's hard to resist things that you don't look at. You got to look at it in order to be able to resist it. And if you don't resist it, then your children will feel it unconsciously. So this is a part of this parenting piece and saying, man, you know what? I'm going to take the time to look at the people who, who done me wrong. I'm going to look at, man, my loved ones that was there that was supposed to care for me and they didn't care for me as they should, but I'm going to use that to my benefit so I will not give my children that same poison that I was already given that I know that made me sick. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to go ahead and give my children the opposite of that. But the reason that I'm going to be able to do that is because I'm going to take the time to look at it. Look at it. So look at that negative. Think about that time when you was looking out that window waiting on for, you know, the people to come through. And they said they was coming through. Remember it. Because now, guess what that will do? When you tell them that you coming to pick them up at 6 o'clock, and you got that in the front of your mind, you like, ain't no way they about to go ahead and end up like me. When I was a child looking out the window, thinking that they coming through and they ain't coming through, you going to be in the car. People going to be trying to pull you in their direction because people are a distraction. They going to be trying to pull you in, in their direction and you going to be like, nope, I got a commitment. I'm supposed to be there at six o'clock because I remember how it felt when I was looking out the window and nobody was there at six o'clock like they told me that they was going to be. Brothers, this is, this is like parenting on steroids. It's different. We ain't talking about, man, how to make a bottle and stuff like that. <laughs> how to change diapers. It's cool, but we ain't talking about that. We talking about, man, intentionally giving our children the father that we want them to have. Serving the relationship between our children and ourselves with our minds. So that relationship can be as strong as it possibly needs to be so we can transfer the information that we want them to have so we can have that influence with them that we need to have so our children can ultimately benefit off of our failures and our successes. That's our responsibility. We don't want our children duplicating our failures. We want them to go ahead and make new failures. We don't want our children falling in the same potholes that we done fell in. We want them to fall in new potholes. 
If they fall into the same potholes that we fell in, then that means they're going to get as far as we've gotten. If they fall into new potholes, then that means that they're going to get further than we have gotten. Our children should start from where we are at, not from where we even came from. The way that they can do that is by us giving them the information that we have been able to gather over our lifetime. We got a wealth of experience, and we, 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 we want to pour that wealth of experience into our children. We do that through a strong relationship. We got to start at understanding what type of father that we are giving to our children, and we want to put some effort into it. So that's what I challenge y'all brothers to do. I'm telling you, this is just a part of it. This is you saying, man, my, my children mean that much to me, and I want to be focused on what type of father that I'm giving to them, and I'm going to take time out of the day. Time is our most valuable asset that we got, Right? And I'm going to take the time. We don't need to be in our children's presence for us to be a father. We are a father in our children's presence. We are a father outside of our children's presence. We don't stop being a father, right? So, so because of that, we want to make sure that we are still giving that fatherhood, that our, our responsibility, some time. And that's why we want to write those lists down. Write those lists down, brothers. And then look at them. Look at all of that negative. I don't care what it was. It could be like, man, I just didn't like when they yelled at me like that. You know, I, I didn't like when they when they cussed me cussed me out. My stepbrother said, man, he said, man, you know what, man, my mom used to call me a, a, a you, you, you little mother. You know, he's like, and he said, man, what? Are, he said he, st he started saying, man, what am I gonna do with that? He said when he was getting called that, he said, man, what am I supposed to do with that? He said that as a kid. He said that's how he was thinking as a kid. He said at 14 years old, he said, man, this stuff got to stop. He said he went up and pushed up on her and said, man, you know what? This stuff got to stop. He's like, you can't keep on calling me little mother like that. Like, you can't keep on talking to me like this. But he said, man, he said, man, she was punking me, Los. <laughs> that's what he said. She was punking me, man, all the way up until 14, man, until I, until I took a stance. But that's crazy, ain't it? And he talking about it. I said, man, that's heavy duty, man. That's heavy duty, you know? So just thinking about that negative, and if you don't, then there's a good chance that you'll duplicate the negative too, you know, unconsciously, right? So now the next stage into establishing a, a strong, positive relationship and understanding what type of father that you're going to deliver to your children, we want to look outside of ourselves. So now we look at movies, we look at other fathers, and we go ahead and pull from the movies, TV, television shows, we pull from every place that we can. And fathers in the community, we pull from every place that we can and say, I like the way that they interacting with their children. I want to be a father like that too. I want to take that character trait on as a father. You see how we building on this father piece? I'm, I'm building on this father that I want to give. I'm putting in a lot of work into understanding what type of father that I'm going to give to my children. So when I'm looking at the TV, I'm saying, man, okay, well, I like um, my wife and kids, for instance. I like my wife and kids. I used to like the way that um, that Wayne's brother used to interact with his children on my, on my wife and kids. I was like, man, this brother's a creative dad, right? I said, man, you know what? I want to be a creative dad, too, just like that. So me wanting to be a creative dad like I see on my wife and kids, right? You know what I, I implemented? And, be, and when, 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 he, when he's a creative dad, he comes up with different ways to, to get his point across. Or to teach. So he comes up with different ways to teach. Real stuff. I remember one time he had him eating all the pies. Because some he ain't know who ate the pie. And he see them sticking together. And so he said, man, all y'all going to eat all these pies. So extra for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they had pie. Right? Crazy. I remember one time Junior said, man, I'm, I'm grown. You know? And he said, you grown? He said, yeah, man, I think I should be able to come in any time that I want to. He said, no doubt. He said, like, but he's like, this place locks down at a certain time, you know. And Junior was like, man, okay, cool. So I can stay out as long as I want to. And he found out, Junior found out that he ain't had nowhere to go, man, after a certain time. So you found Junior in the back of the in, in the backyard, man, in the grass, laying in the morning time, getting woke up by the sprinklers. And he's he getting woke up and he at the door, like, man, okay, I'm done. Like, man, just let me in, man. You know. So he was a creative dad. 
So I, I, I take I take that type of I, I take those type of ideas and say, man, I want to be a creative dad too with my with my children. So something that I did inside of my household, I created the double up. <clears throat> now the double up is a beautiful thing, brothers. You know, the double up is something that I implemented. I started it with my teenagers back when I had first got out of prison, right? I started it with them. A couple of years after I got out of prison, I started the double up. The double up is designed to teach, you know, um, uh, saving um, uh, and, and also being prepared for opportunity when they present itself, right? I say, man, uh, uh, opportunity not, preparation answers. The people who are successful in life are the people who are prepared, right? So this is what I'm trying to teach in my program called the double up. And y'all guys are free to go ahead and implement it in y'all's household too, man. So the double up, what I was doing is I was giving them allowance every couple of weeks, about $20, $30. And I told them, I said, man, when I come up to you, I'm going to say double up. And whatever you have in your savings at that particular time from your allowance, I'm going to double it. That means if you have $40 saved, I'm going to give you another $40, make you have $80. If you have $50 saved, I'm going to give you another $50, make you have $100, right? And I'm going to say double up at an undisclosed time. I'm not going to tell you exactly when it's going to be double up because opportunity is not going to tell you when they're when they coming, right? They just pop up. And if you're not ready for them, then they become a missed opportunity. So I'm treating this the same exact way. You're not going to know when I'm going to double up. You just got to be ready. Just make sure that you're spending your money wisely. Make sure that you are saving your money to be prepared for this double up. And they was excited. They was like, oh, yeah. And I said, man, not only that, but the double up can happen on a Thursday. On Friday, you'll still get your allowance. They was like, oh, sweet. Oh, I got it. They was like, no doubt. I said, okay, no doubt. You, you ready? Y'all ready? It's like, yeah, man. They was excited. They was ready to rock and roll. And then we, I waited about like three months. After I told them, and I was just watching them, and I'm seeing them spin and stuff, I said, look at these jokers, man. Like, I'm like, I got him. And I went to the bank. I got about like 40 ones, right? Then I come up to him, the youngest one. I say, man, double up. And he looks at me. Both of their bedrooms was downstairs. He looks at me, and he says, huh? <laughs> I say, double up. And he he said, dang, this stuff is for real, huh? I like wait for God. I said, no doubt. Go get that. Go, go, go get what you got, man. You know, come on, hurry up. You know, and he went on ahead. He was walking. His brother was walking like he was in the Green Mile, like Mike <laughs> Clark, Clark Duncan. I said, bro, come on, man. Let's get it done, man. So he goes downstairs. He comes back upstairs, and he's just walking real slow. He got a somber look on his face. I say, bro, come on, man. He drops a little couple of pennies. I say, oh, I see what you're working with. And plus, he, he we walking like this. I say, oh, this brother, he ain't got nothing to fold. This brother got stuff in his hand. I said, oh, I, this is going to, this easy work. This is what I said. Oh, this easy work right here. This is easy work. I said, what you got, man? <laughs> I said, pick up your little pennies, man. He's like, you dropped a couple pennies, man. You know, he picked up his little pennies, man. He, he dropped it on the table. Click, 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 click. And he had one dollar bill there, balled up and, and all of that. I said, man, oh, okay. Three months of allowances, huh? This could have been like about two, three hundred dollars, man. Double up, right? And he got about like, I started counting. I said, oh, okay. It's a dollar and eighty cents. He says, man, he says, dang it. A dollar and eighty cents. I said, okay, I'm gonna double you up for a dollar and eighty cents. I gave him two dollars, right? Y'all know I'm petty. I took twenty cents, right? I took my change, right? I took my two dimes. I said, let me get my two dimes, right? This brother's like, this brother go take two dimes. Like I can't even get. I say, brother, double up means double up. You get a dollar and eighty cents, right? So he then had three dollars and sixty cents. Beautiful man. This brother like, man, you got the best time, man. This is crazy, right? So then my my older one, I said, man, double up. And he looks at me and he says, oh, I got it, right? This brother get to moving. And I'm starting to feel a certain type of way now because I'm this brother might have been laying in the bushes on me. I'm like, oh, my gosh, my heart like this. I might not be here. I might not have enough to cover the bill. Like, I got bills to pay, right? right? I'm like, this brother might, man, I hope he ain't coming up here with a hundred, hundred, two hundred dollars, right? I'm like, hold up. I wanted to say time out, but he moved too fast. I wanted to say, man, let me give you 30%. 
of what you got. Like, after he took off like that, I wanted to say, brother, not double up. Let me give you 30%, you know. <laughs> like, double up, man. Ain't nobody getting 100% profits out here, man. Come on. Ain't nobody getting 100% return on their investments like that, man. Like, I wanted to break it down, but it was too late, so I was tied in to my commitment, right? So he comes back upstairs. And he's like, yeah, dad, I've been waiting. And he got something folded. And I'm like, man, dang, this brother got something folded. And I seen a 20 on top. I'm like, oh, man. And he like, I'm like, oh, man, this brother, this brother playing games, man. I said, oh, no, nah, man, this brother about to take me up top. So when I understand, I'm like, I'm like, man, this brother about to take me up top. So he counting it. He's, I'm like, I'm like, what you got, son? Come on, man, quit playing with me, man. What you got? Now I'm starting to like rush him. I, I want to know. I'm like, just put me out of my misery, man. Like, what you got? You know, come on, man, quit playing. He's like, I'm like, bro, you playing, man? Tell me what you got, man. You know. <laughs> and he put it on the table. And he had $35. I say, man, sheesh, I'm glad there was a lot of ones. I'm like, okay, here go $35. I mean, I went away and took that $35 out of my pocket. Boom, I doubled up to $35. He then had $70. But both of them looked at it, and they said, man, you know what? Man, the youngest one was like, man, this stuff is crazy, man. I I, I could have, man, I, I don't even know what I spent the money on. You know how sometimes you be, I don't know where the money went. He was in one of them places. I don't know where it went to. I don't know what the heck I got. It, 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 so it was foolish spending, right? And, and my older one, he was saying, man, I could have, man, had way more than this. He was like, man, I could have had way more than this. I'm going to do better the next time. So I was excited where they was at mentally, right, mentally, because I want them to, to really understand, man, the importance of being prepared for the opportunity, right? Like, that's what it was all about. A beautiful thing, man, it's not about what we put in our children's hands. It's what we put in their heads. So I'm like intentionally trying to put something in their heads in that way, you know. And then also get them to, you know, manage their money. You know, people don't have a, a, a money problem, right? People have what? Thinking problems. It ain't no money problems because a lot of money go through people's hands. <laughs> people make a lot of money. But the reason why they, they, they don't have it is because why? It's thinking errors that is not being addressed. So I figured that if I go ahead and manage my children's thinking errors, then they will always be able to have money. They will always be able to be in good places. Some people will sit up there and, and buy everything that they want in the beginning of the month. And at the end of the month, they begging for what they need, right? I don't want my children to be that type of person, right? Because I know that that's not life. That's not good living. Right, so I want them to be able to be the ones that say, "Man, you know what? Hey, hey I, 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 I buy, I buy the, the, I buy the things that I need, I buy the things that I need, you know." So then that's what it's about, man. Just giving them that type of mind. But that was the double up, man. It's a beautiful program, man. It, it spilled all, it spilled off into my, to my youngest son. He started doing it, and, and and he started to benefit off the double up. I remember one time we went to. Um, went to AutoZone, and he said, Dad, man, let me get them um, mechanical gloves. And I said, man, what you want the mechanical gloves for, son? You, 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 you're eight years old. What you gonna do with them? And he said, man, no, no, they're good. I, I want them. I said, man, they $10. I said, oh, yeah. I said, yeah, they $10, man. I said, you sure you want them? He said, yes, I want them, Dad. I said, no doubt. I said, man, go ahead and get them out of your money. And he said, man, I ain't got my money on me. And I said, man, I'm like the bank. I'll, I'll loan it to him. But he knows that it's going to impact his double up. Right. And I say, man, I say, man, I'll loan it to you. You know that brother turned around and said, ah, I don't really want them gloves. <laughs> I said, I know you don't want them gloves. I know you don't, right? I'm cool on them gloves. I said, absolutely right, you cool on them gloves, right? But look at what I'm doing right there. Look at what's going on. He's starting to be aware of what it is that he wants to get done. And he sees what threatens what are getting done what he wants to get done, which is benefit off of the double up, being prepared for the opportunity, giving him that type of mind that he's going to need to have to be successful. He's learning that in the double up. This stuff is crazy, brothers. I'll be feeling like surgical with my children, man. <laughs> Straight up. I'll be with them jokers like, man, ooh, I can't 
way to roll you out to society. Like, like I'm just putting them through all different types of programs, conditioning their minds. I'm putting their minds through all different types of exercises, right? I'm doing all kinds of different things with my children so that their minds can be strong. And they won't be left for their for, for their feelings to dominate their behaviors. Their minds will dominate their behaviors, and they will find themselves in an ideal place in life. But this is my responsibility as a father. So I go at parenting in this way. And because I do, man, I get certain type of results that I'm good with. I get results that I'm good with, but the only reason is because I'm going at it with a high level effort. This stuff takes a high level effort. If you want high level results, you gotta match it with high level effort. But you cannot get high level results with low level effort. It doesn't match. You will not be able to say, hey, high level results, go ahead and marry me. With marry me, I'm a low level effort. That high level result is going to say, man, I don't marry low level effort. I only marry high level effort. Are you crazy? Why would I marry a low level effort? We do not mix. We are oil and water. High level results marries high level effort. Our children becoming successful in life is a high level result. It's going to take a high level effort from us as fathers. And the first place that it's going to start is with us thinking about what the heck are we doing when we are interacting with our children? What type of father are we delivering to our children? We're not giving them any old type of father. We are intentional and deliberate about what we are doing. I make sure I cook dinner every single night, brothers. Why? Because I remember growing up and it was they on bang with dinners, with the stuff that you boil, Salisbury steak, chicken a la king, sliced, sliced roast beef, <laughs> uh, 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 what, else, what else was it, sliced turkey, and then we rotated on Friday, what we ate on Monday. I said, no, I'm going to go ahead and get on Google. I'm frying chicken. I'm making steak. I'm doing all kind of things. I'm doing a, 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 a chicken and steak over fried rice, right? I'm doing fried rice. I'm learning how to do that now. So I'm doing all kind of things. I'm putting eggs in it and everything. I'm doing all kind of, putting vegetables in it. I'm doing it all now, right? Because I got my children. So I make sure that my children are getting high level effort. I leave from these programs, I teach, I go home, I cook. My children wake up in the night, I'm there. They don't wake up in the night and I'm gone. Because you know how sometimes you can be like, man, hey, my children are sleeping, I'm going to go ahead and step out the door, and then they'll wake up, and then you're not there. They're going to feel a certain type of way. I remember how I used to feel when my father wasn't there, you know, and my grandmother was there. And I'm like, where the heck Pop done went to? Now, I used to go everywhere with my Pop. Everywhere he went, I was going. So sometimes when I would go to sleep, my father would be like, uh-oh, it's time to get out of here. This brother, this brother, he's probably trying to go get some trim or something, man. That brother's like, man, this brother in the way all the time, man, you know. But I just make sure that when I do have my children, I'm dead serious, man. I'll be there. I don't go out. I don't, I don't, you know. This is the sacrifice. I got my children, so I'm like, man, I'm not going out. I go out on my week off. Now, my 14-year-old is totally different, but my 7-year-old, this little lady, she'll wake up, and when she wakes up, she wants to know where the heck you at, <laughs> straight up. So I understand that. So because I understand that, I'm going to go ahead and chill out. You know, I don't go kick it and stuff. You know, this is a decision. This is a decision. She ain't ever got to wake up and wonder where the heck I'm at. It's a decision. And this strengthens the relationship, my brothers. Because she can tell that I'm handling her with care. I'm not just giving her any old father. She can tell that I'm intentional about what I'm doing. She comes running down the stairs. She thinks that I'm, I'm, she don't know what that. I've been showing her plenty of times that I ain't went nowhere. She'll come running down the stairs. I'm downstairs doing laundry. Yeah, brothers, I'm doing laundry. Okay, you got me. I'm downstairs doing laundry. Dad! And sometimes it do be irritating me. I'll be like, yeah! <laughs> 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 
downstairs because she'll try to talk to me all the way from upstairs. But quit trying to talk to me. I can't even understand what you're saying. I'm down here. <laughs> but because of that, brothers, I, I, I get a chance to experience man, some high level results. I get a chance to experience, man, my daughter just coming home with pictures and saying, daddy, super dad, and things like that. I get a chance to experience my daughter drawing pictures of me everywhere she go. I get a chance to experience my daughter saying, man, hey, I need to get your merch on. So she wears my shirts. And even though they ain't got no kid sizes, you know what she done did? She done got the small sizes. So the, the small men sizes. And she tying it up like this. I'm like, I got to make some some on um, my t-shirts in the small sizes and the kid sizes because she going to make this work. Birthday comes. She's like, man, I need to get my dad browns. Matter of fact, you know what she is? She's a Browns fan. 100%. She's wearing Nick Chubb to school. She's committed to the dog pile. That only can be done with a strong relationship, my brothers. Because the Browns haven't given people really much to go for, you know, especially the kids. I can think of Bernie Kozar and what's the slaughter, and, you know, I can think of, you know, Reggie Langhorn and Ozzie Newsom. I can think of Kevin Mack. I can think of these brothers back then, right? I can think of them. I can think of us going into the championship game. I can think of people saying we was going to win the Super Bowl, but we going, we, man, they have been giving us only 16 seasons. Three and 15, three and three and three and 14 seasons, right? So my kids, for them to be Browns fans, the reason why they are Browns fans, brothers, is because I got the influence, because I got a strong relationship with my children, and they're not going to come against what I'm for. So if they're going to be Browns fans, surely I can help them to become successful adults. They're going to take yeah. the character, right? If they're going to take that on, then surely they're going to take on these character traits that I need them to take on to become successful adults, right? Game time. So that's what I want y'all to do, brothers. I want y'all to go back and I, I want y'all to um, just, just write down those lists. What's the positive interaction that you had with your, with your parents, your caregivers when you were younger, and I want you to intentionally implement that into your parenting and you're going to find out you're going to be saying man you know a lot of times parents be man I, i'm doing i'm doing that no doubt but you know what happens when you when you become aware of it you're going to do it more often because before you was doing it here and there but now once you become aware of it you're going to do it more often right and then i want you to identify the negative and i want you to resist that negative whatever that negative is make sure that you look at it and say boom i'm gonna make sure that they don't get that negative, right? So we can understand what type of father that we're gonna to deliver to our children. Time is the most valuable asset that we got, brothers. We take this time that we in here and we invest it into something that matters to us the most. That means that you can go in your pocket and you can count how much money you got. You can go ahead and call your bank and see how much money's in the bank. You can call your credit cards and see how much available balance that you have on your credit cards, but it's nowhere on the face of this earth that you can call and ask them how much time do you have left. And that's what makes it the most valuable. It's more valuable than anything that we have because you don't know how much of it you have. And if that's the case, don't you want to invest it into things that really matter instead of spending it on bingo? Spending it on TV. What's the return on that investment? If you spend your money, you'll be broke. But if you invest your money, you'll be wealthy. If you spend your time, you'll be in a bad place. But if you invest your time, you'll be in a good place. Invest your time. That's all I did. I've been investing my time ever since 19 years old. I've been investing my time ever since. After I found myself inside a Marion Correctional Institution, I've been dead set on investing my time. I ain't stopped. I'm still investing. This is an investment of my time. The more that I help fathers become better fathers, the better father that I become. That means that my children is going to get an even greater father. How can they not? Because I'm going over this content over and over and over. I've been teaching this since 2013. 
So when I'm doing my parenting methods, it's like focus, boom, boom, boom. Training, educated. I've taken the time, countless of hours. All right, brothers, appreciate y'all, man. I got to get on the road, man. I, I'm an hour and a half away, man. <laughs> Jeez, like, this is my Friday. This is go time for me, man. I'm up in here with y'all, man. Appreciate you, man. Was it good content? Yes, absolutely. Good, 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 good. Heck yeah. I want to make sure it's this time well spent, man. Is it was it was it good was it a good investment of your time? Good, 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 good. Oh, everybody sign in. Please. All right, brother. I'm, I'm gonna check it out for sure. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna let's see what I can see what I can come up with. Man. All right, brother. No doubt. All right. I'll see y'all. I'll see you right there next time. Maybe it'll be next Friday or. <laughs> see what I can do, what I can, what I can schedule, man. Uh, you don't have to set time if it's whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, but she'll, she'll, she'll let you know. Um, uh, TJ. But count on next Friday, though, for right. sure. So, in between that, there might be some time in between that. But next Friday right. at six o'clock. Good stuff, man. How you doing, brother? All right, you too, brother. It's a wrap.